Well, the MP panel, formerly known as the Rookies, they've just gained so much experience we don't have to call them that anymore. They're back to share their positions on this and other issues of the day. Conservative MP Stella Ambler, NDP MP Jenny Sims, who's also the critic on this foreign workers file, and Liberal MP Yvonne Jones. Welcome to you all. Nice to have you Thank back. You. After, I hope you had a... I know you guys work harder on your writings in here, but anyway, let's move along. This program, I'd like to get your thoughts, Jenny, on, on this particular response that we just got from the Immigrant Workers, uh, the Migrant Workers Alliance. Have uh, they got a good point here? Do you think that there is room to at least improve the system for these temporary foreign workers so they don't feel like second-class citizens that are tied to an employer for life? You know, we've been asking for a comprehensive review of this program for a long time because we have seen the problems over and over again. And let me make it very clear, it's not the fault of the workers who get brought here. We, the employers, have agents who go overseas and they recruit them, make them all kinds of promises which they can't live up to when they arrive here. Mm -hmm. And then we hear of abuse when they are here because they're in very vulnerable positions, not protected as workers, as Canadians would be. So that's really, really important. It's not their fault. The second thing is, it's very hard for Canadians, especially when youth unemployment is at double digits, 14 to 15 percent in many areas, as to why we need temporary foreign workers for entry-level jobs that many people could go into, learn how to work, learn the skill that's required, and then they move up the food chain. And I think that we have to really focus on that. Fixing the temporary foreign worker program and a moratorium isn't meant to be there forever. It's not a banning. It's to give us a breather, take a look at the program, fix it. And we're calling for an independent audit because the, the uh, transgressions in this program are not limited just to the low skilled. We've seen it amongst the miners. We've seen it amongst the welders, iron workers, the banks you name it. So right. for me, what we've really got to get back to is this program was designed only when no Canadian worker was available and only at first for highly skilled and then the drawers were opened. And let me want to say Keep one going. more thing. Can't run the whole panel no, here. I just want to say one other thing that in no way are we capturing the seasonal agricultural workers That's or the right. live-in caregivers because those are different streams. Yvonne? Yvonne, i got to get your thoughts because a lot of employers say, look, I, I have jobs, I put them out there for Canadians and no one comes forward or they don't show up after day three. How do you deal with that reality? Sometimes these foreign workers are the best employees for certain types of work. Well, that is the case in certain cir circumstances, but not all. And uh, I, I agree what what my colleague is saying, a year ago we brought a motion to the House of Commons asking for a review of this program. Uh, it was voted down by government at the time and now we're asking for an audit to be done of the program. We feel that we should not have to punish all of these people that are out there that are managing this program appropriately, using it to meet the service needs to Canadians in various regions of the country. However, we feel that the government fell down on the job. They did not screen appropriately. They did not put proper um, mechanisms in place to ensure that in areas where you had a high unemployment rate that you weren't bringing in two, three hundred workers in those regions. And uh, and a lot of this is because of different different factors. One is definitely where we've seen down downsizing in the Department of Employment and Immigration. Um, there was a time when you would have workers in various regions of Canada. We've seen many of these offices closed down and people being laid off. So the same level of accountability is not existing in government when it comes to this program or when it comes to other programs, I would go as far to say. And that's why you have some abuse and that's why you have problems like we have today. I know the response that the Prime Minister and the Minister had was, well, if this program's so flawed, how come so many MPs from the other parties want to have foreign workers come into their riding, Stella? He's, he's stealing my lines. Oh, now. sorry. <laughs> well, that's a I good mean, point, that certainly is a good point. Um, it's uh, the program. Uh, we, we have been closing the loopholes on it, and the minister has been. Uh, you know, he is. 100% on top of this issue, knows it well, and understands that there is a need um, 
in, in, in particular parts of the country for uh, temporary foreign workers and that um, and and that's what the program is always there for but it was never intended uh, to take jobs away from Canadians Canadians always have to have the first crack at the jobs and you know I would appreciate it if you know instead of calling for whatever it is Audits. they're calling for that maybe they could vote in favor of some of the reforms that we've put forward uh, but they vote against every you don't every need time. Them to. you can get it through so, anyway yeah well I mean <laughs> Okay, Thankfully. Why, why is NDP the most prolific applicant for foreign workers when on one hand they, they say that the program's so flawed? Well, first of all, let me say that no NDP member of parliament has the right to give an LMO. That is given by the minister's oh, department. Oh, he's pointing that out, by yeah. the way, a lot. No, no, <laughs> he gives them out. We don't. And well, I, you apply for them. No, what, is, what he's talking he about to today, <laughs> what he's talked about today, is uh, advocacy that is done after someone has got an LMO mm -hmm. and their application may be stuck in process. Like as a caseworker, I look into immigration cases and all kinds of things. And by the way, we've never said that we need to get rid of the program altogether. There are some categories and some areas where temporary foreign workers program serves the country well. well and we we're not liberals, willing, exotic dancers. We're not we're willing to in. throw out the baby <laughs> with the bathwater, so to speak. But what we are saying is it's broken right across the board and we need an independent audit. And let's bring in the Auditor General. And I know I hear my colleagues saying the minister knows this file inside out. Well, the minister's had years to fix this and us have had other ministers and the program is broken. Quick uh, class. Well, thirty percent decline yeah. in uh, in total applications. That in itself, I think, is a number that shows us that that things are getting better and that and it's it's working. There are there's a there's a smaller there's a there's a, a, a smaller need for it. So last word to you on this topic before we move on to others, Yvonne. <laughs> well, I just want to make it clear that uh, the program needs fixing. It doesn't necessarily need to be dismantled and thrown out. I think it is meeting the demands of a lot of employers across Canada who are having trouble in recruiting staff but there has to be a better balance there has to be more accountability and you have to prop put the proper controls in place to monitor it so what we're seeing here is abuse by employers but also negligence by government in administering a program we're 10 days away from a day of honor for afghan vets uh, and oh. soldiers and we're finding out that there seems to be a sponsorship segment of this segment to help families. That's, you're disgusted. Why are you disgusted? Shouldn't we allow the private sector to show their appreciation as well as the public sector? You know, at first the um, families were told they had to pay their own way. Well, they and then, the minister, no. then no. the minister stood in the no. house and said, we're picking up the cost. And now we're hearing that we're looking for private sponsorship. No. Give me a break. We're talking about men and women who gave up their lives and went to serve went to serve uh, for our country and for what we Absolutely. represent. And now for us to say we have money to fly around the Prime Minister's jets all over the place with specialized guests, but we don't have money to fly in the families. Okay, I want to get your thoughts. The, You're getting... And like that was that's heroes. just I, no one heroes. no one has ever said that for first of all uh, that the private sector that that there are organizations uh, that also support uh, our veterans and our soldiers that that are stepping up I think is 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 wonderful and to see the opposition playing politics with this is uh, I'm I'm disappointed I'm very disappointed okay. that's it's not you know this is uh, not a case uh, the government has never uh, we've always said that um, that we will uh, absolutely pay for it that no family of a fallen soldier will have to pay their way um, and that whatever is left whatever the the private companies uh, are not paying for or the organizations like uh, True Patriot Love whatever they're not paying for uh, that the government will step in and and fill John the gaps. Jones, last word to you on this topic. D the disappointing part of all of this is that government is trying to get themselves out of out of looking bad on something that they look terrible on. Uh, they have shown complete disrespect for these military families. They've shown disrespect for our soldiers. And by pawning this off on a charity to try and raise the money to bring these families here, obviously these charitable organizations feel a sense of responsibility. They want military families to be there. 
there to pay the tribute that they should deservingly pay in this country. But they're doing it in such a way, in my opinion, that is nothing only disrespectful. And I think the minister okay. should stand to I'm his not, word that he had I'm in the House so of disgusted. Commons. And, and that is to bring these oh, families together I'm, like he said okay. he would We're and not, like his government said they would. Thank you all. Now, quickly, can you do one word answers? I, I know you can. <laughs> Wi-Fi service in international parks, yes, no. Yvonne? Communi okay. Communities first in this country that still have dial-up and no internet service should be a priority. Jenny? Priorities? I don't think that's a top priority for me. Last word. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping they can maybe get some private companies to offer hotspots. Okay. I but think that would be better. Not necessarily Parks Canada. Okay. Can, can we'll be talking to someone about that so. later in the show.